Hello everyone and welcome to our piece to explain co-location. I'm joined by Wendell who is going to run us through uh, the latest piece on the platform around co-location. So Wendell, if I come straight to you on what actually is co-location? Yeah, thanks Ed. So fundamentally we can think of co-location as just putting a battery asset alongside something else. So that could be uh, some generation like a soda farm or it could be demand, so maybe a factory. Okay. And is that sort of, is that is that like physically, do you mean sort of in the same field or do you mean kind of behind the same meter point? Yeah, so it'd be on a very similar location. So at mm -hmm. the very least, it's sharing the kind of connection to the grid. Okay. Um, it could be actually kind of physically right next to it mm -hmm. or sometimes it might be slightly separated. Okay. Okay. All right. And in terms of, in terms of like, why would you actually co-locate battery storage? Um, what, what are the reasons there? So I think there's quite a few reasons, but... If we look forward, by far the biggest one is going to be around the availability of grid connections. Okay. You know, if you speak to anyone in the industry, this is kind of the big uh, problem that is really facing us in reaching, say, 2035, the net zero targets we had. And so, you know, how can we utilize the available grid connections that you have both today and in the future to the best uh, way possible? Mm -hmm. Well, that's by let's put a battery asset alongside, say, solar. Mm -hmm. You're utilizing both of them maybe uh, in, a, in a better, more efficient way. Okay, and so we're saying uh, if you have a solar asset with a with a grid connection, you might not be using all of that grid connection. If you then have a solar asset with a battery alongside it, you can both of those assets can use that same grid connection. Exactly, yeah. If okay. we think about it, a solar asset is gonna be generating and exporting to the grid most of the time, say, during the middle of the day, mm -hmm. but that's not when the grid necessarily needs that electricity and the battery can instead, uh, say, charge up overnight and discharge into that more valuable uh, evening slot. Okay, okay, but well, that sounds great. Yeah. Um, so, so why haven't we seen more of that on the grid today? So I think just to date, it's been simpler to uh, sort of target either standalone uh, storage assets uh, as, as a standalone asset. Mm -hmm. So um, that's both when you're thinking about building up the business case, what you need to get in place. So the contracting, the financing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you're introducing a complexity to that as soon as you're thinking about co-locating. Yes, okay, so you're saying that, you know, if, if the business case is there for a standalone asset today, just crack on and get that done. Yeah. But in the future, you're saying there's, there's so many sort of um, issues around getting good network connections that people are gonna have to look at a more sort of complicated structure of co-locating assets alongside each other. Exactly, okay. yeah, I think we what we've seen today is those available grid connections have kind of been starting to being used up. Mm -hmm. But in the future, there'll be uh, probably a little bit, no, little bit of a bigger need for flexibility okay. in terms of uh, how you actually get one of those grid connections. Okay, brilliant. Well, I will dive into the article ASAP, and I think uh, this is the first of a mini series as well. So I look forward to yeah. reading the uh, the uh, the other set. Okay, brilliant. Thanks very much for joining us, and um, enjoy the piece.